would you like to give us your name and your position? Yes, I'm Britt Glonsinger and I'm a professor in the Plant and Microbial Biology Department at the University of California, Berkeley. And, and what's your your precise uh, investigation, what's the precise investigation you are doing right now? Mm, you so, study? Yeah, yeah, so what I'm really interested in is how it is that viruses, and specifically herpes viruses is the system that my lab works on, but how it is they come in and hijack the cellular gene expression machinery of the host when they're infecting that. And the reason that we study that is because we know that viruses aren't very good at inventing, they're good at stealing. And so if we find something that the virus is doing in the host cell, we know that's probably something that our own cells are already doing. So we can learn something about us at the same time as we're learning something about the pathogen. Yeah, I think studying viruses is, is amazing, right? You yeah. learn something every day. And, and what would you say to students that are interested in virology, how to approach that area? Yeah, yeah the, it was the thing, it was the hook that got me into science, I have to say. When I was an undergraduate, it took me three years of college to decide what I wanted to do. I was trying out everything uh -huh. <laughs> until I read The Hot Zone. <laughs> it came out the year that I was in college. Uh -huh. And at the time, I, I started reading it and I thought, this is the most fascinating career ever. Of course, real life virology is often not at all like what the sensationalized stories are of chasing plagues and whatnot. But it was the thing that got me interested in this idea of what are these really minute things that can wreak such havoc, either in us or in animals or in plants. And so I started taking virology classes to try and learn more about them. And then that's when I decided to explore lab research and go to graduate school specifically for virology because those were the things that fascinated me. Right. And I think it's very important to all the people in general, right? Yeah. I mean, everybody knows what a virus is. Yeah. We have viruses in the news every all day, the right? All time. Yeah. So yeah. it's also an easy thing to yeah, it's a very approachable topic that you can understand, even if you don't know anything about science, you can understand the importance of viruses and that right. what they're doing to human health, the, the diseases that they're causing all over the world, um, how they're impacting crops and agriculture and our food sources and the environment. There, viruses, there's nothing on earth that's not touched by a virus, right. basically. We can exist you know, at our core because viruses are shaping the world around us. And so uh, they're fascinating. Right. <laughs> There's also this big discussion about how girls that are interested in STEM, mm. they are not encouraged to do STEM. How is it in your country? Yeah, it, we have that discussion all the time too. Um, I, I think that's a problem that's perhaps pervasive everywhere. Um, and the way that I see it is you, you have to recognize for science, it's about curiosity and everybody is curious. It's not about an innate ability to think one way or to, to, to process things in, in one way. You have a certain mind that is set for science. It's a curious mind and everybody has a curious mind. And so as long as you are, you know, uh, is something that excites you, it shouldn't matter <laughs> right. what you think your innate ability is. I never felt like I was particularly smarter than the person next to me. I just thought, I'm really interested in this and I'm willing to work hard. And, um, and, and the type of career that I have in science is a very flexible one. You know, I set my own schedule. It's not like I'm punching a clock every day. I kind of determine when I can come and go and the things that I want to pursue. So there's a lot of flexibility built into that that I really enjoy. Right. And the thing is that we are allowed to have, we are in touch with students, young people, yeah. interesting young people, curious young people all the time, right? Yeah. So it's also yeah. something I yeah, like. Yeah, very that. energizing, very right. energizing to be interacting with undergraduate students and graduate students who, yeah, they're so enthusiastic. It renews your enthusiasm for right. what you're doing. Right. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So uh, the, this discussion about girls, not being able to do math mm. or not being able to do I don't know, science. Yeah. I, I've seen many girls in, in my country that are really interested in science. And, and the only thing I, I think they should know is that curiosity doesn't yes. have gender, right? That's right. So it's very important to encourage That's everybody right. in science. And, That's right. Right? That's right. I think you, you think you're not good at something because you internalize this sense right. of 
I'm, I'm, you know, taking in these opinions that are around me and I'm laying them on myself. You know, other people think that as a girl or as a female you shouldn't be as good at thinking in a calculated way or a mathematical way or in, you know, a scientific way and that's simply not true. So you just have to unburden yourself with all of those negative expectations because you're the same, you have the same potential as anybody does. Right. And the other thing is that people think that sci scientific scientists are weird people, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do. <laughs> that is that is completely true, and it, it's always funny to me because um, when I teach, uh, I teach biology to undergraduates, and and every year I have usually female students coming up to me afterwards and saying, <laughs> "It's so amazing! I never knew. You know, it's so nice to have a female teaching who." who isn't socially awkward, it seems like you're a normal person, you know, you can interact with people, you're not awkward, you dress nicely, whatever. <laughs> you know, you have this stereotype of what a scientist looks like, right. and a scientist looks like whoever is around you, you know. We have scientists who are socially awkward, just like you have non-scientists who are socially awkward. Right. But science at its core is, is such a social thing. So much of it is communicating, is talking to other people, is making collaborations, uh, exploring ideas together. So I think most scientists are actually more social than many I other people. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's just not drawn that way in the cartoons. <laughs> that's that's the problem right. with the cartoons. Yeah. Well, I think that's good okay. enough for us. Thank yeah. you very Thank much. Thank you. <laughs>